What up, Closer Nation? We uh, were on the way to work today, and uh, I want to share a story with you. It's funny, you know, you read the headline on this, and you're like, I knew it. I knew that Stuman was on cocaine. He has all that energy, or he looks really tired. There's no in-between. And uh, surprisingly, I know I hate to let some of you down because, I mean, sometimes the, the sales world and, and cocaine... Uh, can can go hand in hand. I'm not saying everybody in sales does coke, but I'm saying it's uh, I'm saying more people do coke than probably any other drug. It's one of those drugs that people are like, nah, nah, I don't normally do it. Two vodkas into it, they're like, hey man, you still got some of that? And the reason why I share that is, first of all, it's fucking funny, but second of all, I'm gonna share with you a real life story that has happened to me this year, and uh, I do some pretty wild shit, and uh, as long as it's not up high, I don't like heights. Right? I fucking don't like heights and I don't like being cold, but I'll do some wild shit other than that. And uh, last year, right before New Year's, so like two days before New Year's, I, uh, I went to Mexico. And I go to Mexico a lot. You live in Texas, in uh, Mexico, it's like uh, going to New Mexico or Oklahoma or something. It's just, it's like another state. And uh, it's not, you know, it's a two hour flight to Cancun here from the DFW airport, which is about 15 minutes from my house. So it's pretty damn convenient to go down there. The water is absolutely beautiful in uh, Cancun, and it was 85 degrees while I was there in uh, December, and in the beginning of this month in January, while it was 20 degrees here. So like, fuck 20 degrees, I flew south like a bird. You know what I'm saying? Fly, pelican, fly, which is appropriate for this video too. So uh, before I get into my story, let's, uh, let's get some more people on here. Uh, let me know where you're from, leave a comment, where you're from, what you sell. Maybe you can network in the comments a little bit. Uh, give me some love. Hit the like button. What's up, David? I know you're always around, man. We got Chris Smith. I'm about to write your forward to your book, my man. Probably going to have that knocked out by Friday, so be expecting that. And by the way, Chris, congratulations on writing a fucking book, man. That's pretty damn awesome. And uh, so I'm proud of you for that, man, because a lot of people in our, our world set out to write books, but very few actually get it done, man. So, so fucking that's awesome. Charles Beasley, Brian Doves, Brian Doves, man, me and him did an interview for Funnel Closer last week, and uh, Brian is kicking ass, he, his problem is that he has too much business and not enough people, so if you can sell or maybe build funnels, Brian Dubs is a guy that could probably use your help at this moment, so back to my story, so I go to Mexico, fly out, two hour flight, and uh, when I go to Mexico, I like to experience Mexico, it's cool to do the tourist thing, on the beach and stuff, just like when I go to Vegas, like I like to go to Vegas and have the, the experience, I kind of fall off the grid and go do shit that's not necessarily on the strip and everything, and uh, and so I'm the same way in Mexico, in Costa Rica, we went last year, and uh, we fell off the grid, we went deep into the rainforest on four wheelers, I almost died, Travis almost died, it's fucking awesome, and uh, we were drinking sugar cane moonshine, and, and uh, fucking Alex and Pat were swinging off of trees from ropes, I thought they were surely going to die, we were placing bets and everything, I, I lost, I thought they were going to die, so anyway, I go to Mexico, I'm going to Mexico, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to the fucking, the parts of Mexico where like the, the people live, right, like the people, the Mexicans live, and so uh, I go down there, and the first night we go to this place called The City, and I don't know if you've ever been there, but The City is the largest nightclub in the world. Now, the city has usually about 6,000 people inside this nightclub. To put it in perspective, Hakkasan in Las Vegas has about 1,500 people. So this place is fucking two and a half times the size, almost three times the size. No, I'm sorry, it's fucking four times the size. My math this morning. Four times the size of Hakkasan, which is fucking gigantic. And it's four-tiered like a fucking prison in there. And the place is crazy. The escalator broke, they just fucking put carpet over it. Like, fuck it, with stairs now. It's like an old Mitch Hedberg joke, truly coming to life. It's pretty damn funny. And so, and so anyway, uh, we go there and it's like 6,000 people like, <laughs> they just fucking raging and dude, it's crazy. And the way that the clubs, I don't know if you've ever been to Mexico, but the way that the clubs work in Cancun is you just play a flat, a flat fee, right? So you go and you pay like, let's say 80 bucks and you just drink whatever the fuck cheap shit that they give you all night. And so most people, you know, they, they don't normally drink like that. And so this, this vodka and this whiskey and shit, it's like, uh, it's like aerated. So it gives you energy too. It's got a little, maybe a little Mexican marching powder in it. I don't know. And, uh, it gives you energy too, man. So you don't feel drunk and you'll just fucking drink a whole shitload of it, uh, all night. It's just cheap, cheap liquor. And so most people don't know that. They don't know how to control themselves. They don't order beer. They order liquor and they get fucked up. And, you know, and if you're drinking free drinks or basically essentially all you can drink, it's like all inclusive. 
if you are uh, drinking drinks on that level, then you know you're you're having extra and you're going to the bar and they're just shelling these things out like it's fucking skittles, man. So everybody in there's fucked up. Well, if you go to the line to the bathroom. Uh, and the city's only open one night a week, uh, only on Friday. If you go to the line to the bathroom, man, it's always got like tons of people in it. That's the one place guaranteed. There's only one bathroom in the place. It's the one place guaranteed. There's always going to be a shit ton of people flocking. Well, a smart salesman knows that you go where the people are, right? And so instead of trying to interrupt their good time in the middle of the club, the smart salesman just hangs out in the bathroom. And so uh, I'll get more on that here in a second. This is where the the Colombian marching powder and the Mexican cartel come into to play. So the first night when I go to the bathroom the first time, I, I noticed that this guy, uh, he's like, hey, hey, wait, hey, gringo, hey, you want some cocaina? Cocaina? And he's just like in the bathroom posted up. He's a big dude. Ain't nobody going to be able to knock this squatty motherfucker out. He's got a wad of cash on him. They could choke a fucking donkey, man. And he's just fucking, he's like, I got, he sound like a fat Joe song. God, we got Molly got eggs. Go all the way up. Right? I mean, he was fucking pitching it. The thing is, I told him no, of course, uh, at the first time. No, I'm just joking. Uh, but I told him no, of course. I'm like, nah, it's not really, really my thing, man. Uh, because the last time I was in Mexico, I bought weed from a guy. I smoked the weed in the bathroom of the place that I bought it from. And then the guy snitched me out to the cops, and I had to fucking bribe some cops from fucking arresting me. It was a whole fiasco, man. A whole fucking fiasco. I didn't want to go through that again. So not buying drugs in the goddamn club, right? <laughs> and so not even weed, which I don't even really consider drug. Most of y'all live in legal states anyway. Hell, it's legal in Texas in, uh, if, for medical use. And so anyway, I go in there. I'm like, not today, Satan. No coke for me, right? But everybody, he's asking every single person in line, back to back, back, like true salesmanship, right? And I'm not talking about just some dude selling cocaine. This motherfucker is handling objections. Like, I never done it before. Oh, you'll love it. Like, he's just fucking, dude, perfect English, right? And then he talked to the Spanish people in fucking Spanish accent. Like, he knows, he probably spoke French and fucking German and whatever else tourists are around there too, man. He was a master of his crap. And I say that because two nights later on New Year's Eve, we went to this place called Daddio. So we're going to have, yes, we're back in the fucking crazy part of Mexico to party for fucking New Year's, like New Year's, right? Like it, it's about the shit I'm about to tell you was crazy. So we're back down there for New Year's. We go to the club across the street from the city. It's called Daddio's. You got to pay like, I think we paid a thousand dollars to go in there and drink for the night because it was New Year's, you know, and it's like totally packed. And definitely way, the, Mexico does not have a fire code. Uh, for their clubs. Like here in Texas, it, it says like this club holds 295 people. 296 got to get their motherfucking ass out of there, right? Not in Mexico. Just come on in. We'll make it fit. Just fucking, <laughs> let's just hope this place don't catch on fire, even though uh, probably some unlicensed dude wired the damn thing, right? But that's the fun of going to fucking Mexico and cutting loose, right? It's, it's like some shit you can't do here in America. Uh, hence, like, pitch everybody that walks into the bathroom on buying some drugs from you. So, back to that guy. I noticed him. Well, the, the, like, a couple nights later on New Year's Eve, we go over to the Daddios across the street. And it probably holds, you know, 1,000, 1,500 people. It's a pretty big club, too. And uh, and there's, like, this DJ. Maybe it's, like, Tiesto or some fucking, some fancy fucking famous guy or whatever. He's pretty good. And people were into it. And everybody was on the Colombian marching powder. It was uh, it was funny, man. You know, be like, whose mom is that sniffing fucking coke off of that fucking dude's arm over there? It was like, it was insane. Because, you know, you got all sorts of tourists and mix. That usually, they some of them live in places where they ain't seen cocaine before. And they ain't seen unlimited drinks. They come over here from Saudi Arabia or some shit and get fucked up, you know, uh, in Mexico. And so the rules are a lot different in Sharia law versus fucking Mexican law. I promise you that, man. It's a whole different ballgame of, of what's possible, right? And so the... Uh, the people get in this room, man, they are getting fucking, it's New Year's Eve, man, they are getting turned the fuck up, it's like, it is, like, it is absolutely insane, like, we've seen all sorts of misfits, and I don't mean misfits like people like us and you watching this, I mean misfits like motherfuckers that normally wear suit and ties, they got no tan, they just came to Mexico to fucking cut loose doing some really, really good sinning, man, I was enjoying it, so anyway, I go to the bathroom, and what do you know, it's that same dude selling coke, right? And he's hitting the numbers, and he hits me up again. He's like, hey, man, you uh, you want some cocaine away? And I'm like, uh, no, no thanks, man. I go back to drinking my shit. And I, at this point, I already had weed, so I didn't need to buy it in the club. I already got it. And uh, so, look, I'm I'm always 100 with you. I don't want y'all to think I'm all fucking high and mighty or above some shit. I'm just going to keep 100 with you. I didn't need his fucking drugs. I already had my own. And uh, it's Mexico. There's no fucking rules in Mexico. And so, anyway, 
this guy, I got, I'm drinking these fucking vodka sodas like they're, you know, like it's water. And, and probably was, it's probably watered down vodka soda. But anyway, so I'm drinking this shit like it's water. And so, you know, every hour, pretty much, I got to go take a monster piss. Every time, I, and the bathroom's huge, man, so you can get in and out. That dude never missed me. He never missed me. And when I say he never missed me, every single time, he said, hey, wait, want some cocaina? And here's the lesson in that, right? I tell you this funny-ass story uh, about perseverance and everything else <laughs> on his end because he pitched me every single time. Even though I said no, he still pitched me every single time. Here's why. He knew that the more drinks a motherfucker has, the more likely they're to be seduced by what it is that he sells. And second of all, he knew that if he just kept pitching everybody and he wasn't paying attention, he wasn't getting emotionally involved. He was just saying, hey, man, you want a party? Hey, man, you want some coke? You know, and, and here in America and the drugs, he'd be like, Hey man, you like to party? You'd be like, I'm in the fucking club, ain't I? And they're like, what kind of party you like, right? They're just kind of like nonchalant about it. This guy at 3 a.m., because we're fucking in there turning up, man. Me and Amy were getting fucked up. At 3 a.m., this fucking guy, he's in there singing, I'm in love with the Coco. <laughs> like, it's fucking hilarious, man. And like, they're all in there with fucking, I'm in love with the Coco. Like, it was crazy. And then all the dudes that were buying it were fucking singing it along, too, because they were all fucking smashed and probably all fucking wired up on the Colombian marching powder. You know what I'm saying? Um, and uh, that that old fish scale. That's that's what I uh, I heard it was it was called. That's what they said in court when they uh, when they determined what it was that I had. And uh, so anyway, uh, I got jokes this morning, ladies and gentlemen. Fucking jokes. I got jokes for days. And uh, if you lived the life that I lived, you'd have to find a way to laugh about that shit, or you'd fucking want to probably not be around anymore. So just jokes for days, folks. But so the story here is perseverance. This guy knew that he had a captive audience. He knew where he could go. He knew to pay off the door guard. He knew to pay off the club, pay off the cops outside. So there's his profit margin shrinking up a little bit. So he knows when he's in there, probably got to pay off the cartel too. He's got to hit every single person. If they tell him no one time, that doesn't mean that they won't tell him again because the law of averages says that if you hit a motherfucker up 12 times on the 13th time, they're likely to buy from you because all of a sudden there's been what's called a familiarity. And you know, it's like you see the same commercial over and over again. And at first you're like a fucking Snuggie. That's like the stupidest thing ever and the second time you're like fucking snuggy snuggies are stupid who would buy that third time you're like so i just put my my arms through it huh and it would keep it my coffee all right all right fourth time you're like oh yeah i know about the snuggie right it's like we build this like uh this this progression up uh, that of familiarity and so that's what he was doing he was just hitting everybody else sales 101 and so here's my my motivation for you today closer nation and i'm gonna close with this as i pull into the office here my motivation for you today is that the Mexican cartel cocaine dealer can do it and he's got the audacity to pitch every single person whether they give them an objection a no or they buy from them and consistently do it day in and day out all night long and no emotion involved I believe you can too I believe that you have more power and more sales ability than some cartel dude down in Mexico and the fact that you're watching this whether it be at your desktop on a mobile device uh, or incognito because the company you work for has the uh, the uh, URL hardcore blocked, <laughs> the keyword hardcore blocked. However it is that you're watching this, you have more benefit than that guy down there in that club. And chances are, if you fuck your own commission checkup, you're not going to come off missing a finger or being dipped into that crocodile infested water down there in Cancun. So have a great day. Closers, if you thought this was funny, if you learned a little sales lesson from it, make sure you share it with somebody. Make sure you tell your friends to keep off the Colombian marching powder. That shit's no good, y'all.